Good afternoon, and welcome back to the fabulous world of math. So today we're going to be thinking in three dimensions, and we're going to be trying to locate things or figure out what the position of something is in three dimensions. And what's really interesting here is that there's three different ways to do that. So there's Cartesian coordinates, there's cylindrical coordinates, and there's spherical coordinates. So what we're going to be talking about today are 3D coordinate systems. So, what are we going to start with? We're going to start with what I think we're probably the most familiar with, which are x, y, z coordinates. And these are called Cartesian, or sometimes rectangular coordinates. So, let's think about what x, y, and z are. x, well, let's change colors a second. So, x is the distance from the yz plane. y is the distance from the xz plane. And z is the distance from the xy plane. So what are those distances? Uh, let's draw a picture and see what they look like, right? So our, let's draw our 3D set of axes. So we have our z-axis going towards the sky, our y-axis going, say, north, and our x-axis coming out of the screen, hitting us in the face, going east. So, Let's mark those x, y, z positions on these axes and see where we can find this point in three dimensions. So x is somewhere on the x-axis, so let's just say it's there. There's x, so it's some distance from the y, z plane, right? We've got y, somewhere we have our y position, some distance from the x, z plane. And vertically, we've got some location z, some distance from the xy plane. So we can go and find where this will be. We can maybe make some uh, little dashed lines at the x value, have the x come out this way, have the y come out in its direction so that it touches that green one. And we have this other location we can find right here, which is really the point x, y, 0. So the z coordinates, 0 there. And so if we go to x, y, 0, we just need to move vertically the same amount as we have at z. So let's see, we can probably do that. We move from here to here. So let's see, about uh, there. So let's call it right there. We've got our x, y, z point. And so that's how we have a location in three dimensions described with the Cartesian coordinate system. You move in the x direction, then you move in the y direction, then you move in the z direction. And you can get to that location. And you can do those direction moves independently. You can do them in any order. All right, so now let's talk about cylindrical coordinates. Now this is different. This has uh, three things still to describe a position, r, theta, and z. All right, so what are these coordinates? So r, this is something new. r is a distance from the z-axis. So it's a distance that comes out uh, orthogonal to the z-axis, and it's the distance away from that sort of vertical flagpole that we could think that the, the z-axis is. Theta is uh, an angle made with the plus x axis in the xy plane. 
So we'll get to the picture in a second and talk about that. And, and my favorite here is z because z is z from Cartesian coordinates. All right, so z is still z. It's just some vertical uh, distance from the xy plane, or in our case, the r theta plane. So r and theta are replacing x and y. So let's draw our axes in again. So let's get z going up. We got y to the side, and we got x hitting us in the face. All right, so how do we get r theta z? Well, let's maybe start with z, right? We have a z up here. There's our height z. So how do we get to all the other locations? This is maybe difficult. So let's see. Let's start in the uh, xy plane, thinking down here. So if we let z be 0 and we want some point in the xy plane, then we can put it somewhere. So let's put a point somewhere that's not quite where we want it to be yet. But this is some point r theta 0. Okay, so that's our intermediary point that we have there. Now, what we can have is a straight line down in the xy plane that comes out to that point r theta 0. And now we can more easily label the angle theta because it's the angle made with the plus x axis. And we can now go easily label our r because r is the distance from the z axis, which is now actually the distance from the origin. So r is this distance from the origin. And now we can just do that same go up by z again from that location there to get up to r theta z. So we can just go up by this amount and get to our point r theta z. And so that's how we can get to locations in cylindrical coordinates. We could do this uh, in any order again. We could think about what is our height first, and then think about rotating over with theta and moving away from the z-axis with r. Or we could move away from the z-axis with r first, then rotate with theta, then move up by z. So we can do these moves, as they are uh, maybe called, in any order that we'd like. All right, so let's get to the third and final and the maybe best for space travel navigation kind of coordinate system. This is spherical coordinates. Now, there's something to be said here about spherical coordinates, is that this is not necessarily a standard convention. I know that in different disciplines, phi and theta might have their roles reversed. So when, if you're reading a book or looking at a website, you want to go and look up what is the definition of theta and phi for the spherical coordinates that are being used in that resource, because they might be different depending on what we talk about here versus what you will find in the resource or book that you're looking at. So what are we having? Rho, phi, and theta. Well, rho is a distance. It's the distance from the origin in 3D. So it's a three-dimensional distance from the origin. We have phi. This is an angle made with the plus z axis. So Pointing upward is phi equals 0. Pointing downward is phi equals pi. And theta, well, theta is still theta. So theta is an angle made with the plus x axis in the xy plane. So we get to rotate a couple times with these angles, and we get to move in direction with rho. So we can spin ourselves until we're looking at our location, and then we can go in that direction with rho. So let's see if we can figure out how to get to a location uh, with spherical coordinates. So again, z going up, y to the side, x coming out, hitting us in the face. All right, so how are we going to get to a location. So let's start with the location this time. Let's start with a location, and we want to call it rho phi theta. How are we going to get here? Well, the one that I like to start with when thinking about uh, coordinates is 
rho. Rho is the straight line distance from the origin. So if I just make a straight dashed line from the origin to there, I can then label that distance rho. Now that we have that straight line, it might be sort of convenient to go look at phi, because phi is now this angle made with the plus c axis down to there, down to that line segment that's connecting the origin and our point. And so now theta. Theta, we're going to have to take maybe the projection of this green line down into the xy plane. So let's take this down till we're in the xy plane. And so that dashed line down here in the xy plane is the projection of the green thing down into the xy plane, sort of the shadow of that green dashed line down there. So this is a right triangle that we're drawing there, we're seeing in 3D. And so that angle theta is, again, the angle made with the plus x axis in the xy plane. So we just can label that angle theta. And so that's how we can get to this location navigating with rho, phi, and theta. And so you can see, this location is very similar in all three places. So we can think about how do we get to that same location if we describe it x, y, z, or if we describe it r theta z, or if we describe it rho phi theta. So that's our discussion on 3D coordinate systems. And next time, well, you'll just see what happens next time. Have a wonderful day, and I'm out of here.